Repeat that. Tell someone that. Now you personalize it. Uh huh. Say it one more time. Someone shout, I belong to Christ and I belong to his church. Don't say like someone is compelling you. Say, I belong to Christ. I am a member of the body of Christ. His church. Say amen. amen. This morning, I want us to do a little uh, revision. Like I told you last Sunday, um, for the next few weeks, I'm going to be treating this topic and approaching it with a teaching approach. I've said it to you that the reason for it is because there have been a lot of misconceptions in the heart of people uh, about who they are and the church they attend. I have been in the church family for more than 20 years, so like I have a lot of experiences, and by the reason of my privileged position as a pastor, I've met with various kinds of people in the church. And so I can tell you some few things that I know about the church, and I believe that somewhere you will not just be a blessing to the church, but a blessing to your word. Every church family is God's family. Let me repeat that. So we saw last Sunday what the church is. And I'm sure you have not forgotten. The church is a place where believers in Jesus Christ assemble for the purpose of worship, fellowship, spiritual edification, and enrichment. The church is a place where people of God are gathered. And when we are gathered, we are gathered to worship God. We fellowship with one another. And the aim is for our spiritual edification and enrichment. We also saw what the topic you and your church means. You and your church is a covenant relationship and responsibilities. And the benefit of belonging to the church family. When you say I'm a member of a church is a spiritual relationship with Christ and his church. And that relationship goes with responsibilities. It's not just that I come to church to worship God and that is all. No, you have a relationship with Christ, his church. And in that relationship, there are responsibilities and there are benefits that goes with it. We saw an example of four individuals, I think five, Phoebe, Mary, Priscilla and Aquilia, and Mark. Lift up your right hand. I pray that in this church, you will not only be blessed, but you will be a blessing to his church. Yeah. Now you and the church is with the aim to equip every member of this church with a better understanding and knowledge of what the church is, your place, your responsibilities, and the significance of being a member of the church. Last Sunday also, I'm sure most of you have not forgotten this, there are factors that validate church membership. One of them is one, believing that Jesus is the son of God. Let me repeat that. For you to be a valid member of any church, you must believe that Jesus is the son of God. Two, you must confess that you are a sinner in need of Jesus as your savior. Amen. Then three, you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior. We also saw that for you to be a valid member of any church, you must be faithfully committed to Christ and his church. Amen. We have categories of 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 persons or people in the church. One, come and see. Then two, come and receive. Food is ready. Come, don't do anything. Just come and eat. Three, miracle seekers. Then four, spectators, investigators, and commentators. These ones are the ones who have something to say about what we are not doing right and what they are not doing right, but they will never do anything. Five, indecisive group. I don't really know whether I'm going to be a member of this church. I have many churches, but I come here once in a while. Indecisive. And then six, Oh, come on, I'd like to get you. Okay, you took note last Sunday. What are they? Seekers of validations and recommendations. They need recommendation letters. They want to marry. They want to do their baby dedication. Whatever they need from the church, they will come and be a member for a while. Then seven, 
the offended and the grumbling unit. I'm sure we don't have such a unit here, but they are always in every church. Everything offends and anything that is done in the church, is, is, if it's not their own way, it is not the right way. There are people like that. If it is not their own way, it's not the right way. Then eight, the spoilers. These ones are the ones that are committed to everything, you know, what should I call them? They are always like the big gay unit. Let's tear it down. Let the church scatter. You know, when I was saying the word, there's this saying in the, in the local palace, you know, uh, people that uh, area scatter. They are the area scatters. They always want to work against the church. But I trust that we don't have such people here, but they are in every church. The spoilers circle. Ask your neighbor, which category are you? <laughs> please say the fatically, please. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to educate you uh, scripturally, spiritually, so that you can truly Take your place in the body of Christ and his church. Can you say amen? amen? Then we have the night category. Who are there? Believers in Jesus Christ. These are the ones who have confessed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they are fine. They are ready to go. They want to go to heaven. The serve God is... These ones are the ones uh, that say things like, It is me and my God. Oh, it is me and my God. Uh, I just go to church. They close. I go home. They are fine. Just believe in Jesus Christ. They have relationship with God. These ones are fine. Then we have the last category. What are they? Disciples and stewards. These are the ones who are committed to Christ, committed to his interest, committed to his church. These are the ones that will leave church immediately the church service closes. These are the ones who will come to church early. The reason is because they have duties. They have responsibilities. They see themselves as people under an obligation. They have responsibilities. These are the ones that will take care of the chairs for you to come and sit down. These are the ones that will know that there are cobwebs they need to take care of it. These are the ones that will find out that there are things in the house of God that needed to do and they fit into those responsibilities. I, I had a conversation with a brother. Both of us went somewhere. Uh, he told me he has been in this church since 2010 as well. I didn't know you on the, your marriage ceremony. And he said one day he came to this church in 2010 and then he sat in a place in this hall and saw that there was no uh, silicone uh, in that particular spot. So, and they had a voice. Uh, he counted the silicones, and there were five silicones. And so he had a voice and said, "Take care of those fans." So he got home the next day, bought the five silicones, and brought them to the church. According to him, he came with an electrician to install those fans, uh, but. Uh, you know, it was told that the church has, we have our own electrician. Yes, we do. And then, so they stopped him from installing them. And then the church uh, electri electrical unit, they installed the fans. Then he came to church again the next Sunday. And they heard the voice again. He saw that during the uh, one part of the church, uh, the industrial fans, that is the standing fans, was not in that particular location. So he said to, he heard the voice, bring those fans. So he went I can't, I can't remember how many he said he bought, and then he got those fans. Do you know what he told me? He said, Pastor, prior to that time, 5,000 was a big V for me. He said, if I have 5,000, it will look like I'm a millionaire. He said, since that time, according to him, he said, Pastor Collins, who was one of our pastors, introduced him to me, and I had his two hands, I prayed for him. I can't remember him at all. He said, Pastor, since that day, till now. Amen. Amen. Lift up your two hands. May God grant you the grace to know your place in his church and undertake the right responsibilities in Jesus' name. Amen. His name is Brother Charles. I wouldn't want to call his son because I've not seek his permission. He says, since that day, Pastor, it has been from one level to the other. Nobody told him. He heard a voice. God will not lead you into error. Tell your neighbor that. And please, I need you to stay with me also. The devil will also not lead you to give. So if you think the voice you are hearing is not the voice of God, the devil will not lead you into doing what God desires from you. So the more you delay the obedience, the more you are delaying your blessings. He was driving me to a place when he was sharing these testimonies with me. Amen. I said amen. 
It wasn't man who spoke to him. It was God who spoke to me. He heard the voice of God. He didn't come to the other with microphone to announce what God told him. He did it quietly and he was prayed for. And that was a turning point. Those are the categories of believers in the church whom Apostle Paul referred to and said, I recommend phobia to you. And who was phobia? The Bible said, Apostle Paul called phobia a lady, the servant of the church. What does it mean to be a servant of the church? The person who serves the interests of Christ and his church. The person who is committed to serving the interests of Christ and his church. I spoke to a brother some years ago. I said, if my attitude towards the church is the way yours is, I don't think I will be who I am today. I don't think you will have a pastor whom you will call and say, pray for me. Can you lift up your right? I know you are ready. May fresh grace, fresh hunger come upon you to compare you to love him more and do his will in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have seen the various categories, but please don't forget this. The different categories of persons in church are loved by God and his church. So whether you are a spoiler, you are whatever you are, a spectator, whether you are here grumbling, always angry, frowning, because things didn't go your own way, the church didn't do your bidding, know this, that you are loved by God. Turn to your neighbor left or right, you don't know who they are, tell them God loves you. God loves you. So whether you are a spoiler, God loves you. Whether you are come and receive, come and eat, come and... God loves every one of you. But this is the fact. God loves every one of you. But God and his church expect a better relationship and responsibilities that can promote and prosper his purpose for his church. So God loves you. In respect of what category you are in or which category you are in, you are loved by God, but God expects a better relationship. He demands from you responsibilities towards his house so that his purpose for the church can be accomplished. Touch yourself and say, I know God loves me. But he expects more from me. That sounded like you are not sure. Say, God loves me, but he expects more from me. Are you still there? We have this account in Acts 16, verse number 1 to 2. The scripture says, Paul came to Debbie and then to Lysra, where a disciple, who? Who? A disciple, I hope the media are there. The screen is very, uh, I don't know what the media leader could possibly do regarding that. He said, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. Now, this is what we are taking from the verse number two, if you can see it. Uh, we're really sorry for the blood view. Want to go? Can we read it? The believers and the church. Say that. At what? And what? What did they do? Spoke well of him. Who spoke well of him? The believers and the church. Spoke well of Timothy. Let me ask this question this morning. What can the church you belong to say about you? I went to one of these Orthodox churches many years ago. It was a particular church I would like to mention the name. I sat on the pew. And behind, you know, the pew in front of me, I saw an inscription. The family of so, 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 and so. And I looked at the pew very carefully. And they put there, donated 20, 29th, if I'm not mistaken, of a particular month, 1988. The pew was so strong, you know, those days, you know, strong materials. And the Holy Spirit said to me, look at the family name. Lift up your right hand. Makata Shalababa. May men, God, and the church May they approve of your greatness. Amen. If you are going to get to a level of greatness, this three aspect must work for you. God, his church, amen. When God approves of you, the church 
have proofs of you. And I'm going to tell you what that means. And they may cannot say no. Lift up your right hand. May God approve of you. Amen. May his church speak of you. Amen. And may men say yes to you. Amen. And I looked at the family name. And I said, Lord, why are you asking me to look at the family? He said, look at the family name. I would like to call the name. And I looked at the family name. And I remember that in this town, that family has always moved from one level to another. Your today's blessing may be as a result of yesterday's labor. Maybe not you. Maybe your family line. Maybe your parents. The Bible said the generation of the righteous shall be mighty. That means it is not one person. Your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your great-great-grandchildren. He said a generation. A generation talks about a family line that has been in existence for a period of time. A generation is 100 years. Amen. Which means... When, oh, thank you, Lava. lift up your two hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, your generation is blessed. Amen. Your generation will reap the blessings of being committed to Christ and his church. Amen. He said the believers and the church at Israel and Iconium spoke well of him. He was not just a church member. He was not just a church goer. He was committed to Christ and his church. So the whole church and the believers said, Timothy, ah, you must go high. No wonder he has a book in the Bible. You have first Timothy, second Timothy, a name that can never be forgotten. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, I can't hear you. Thank you, Father. We saw this also as well last Sunday. Romans 16 verse number 1. He said, I want you to know that you can trust our sister in Christ. Phobia. Apostle Paul saying. You can trust this sister. I can vouch for her. She is not black and white. She is not a deceiver. She's somebody that when she says yes, it's yes. Thank you, Father. Lift up your two hands. Today, I pray that by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God, may something new happen to you. Yeah. May something new happen to your relationship with Christ yeah. and His church in Jesus' name. Yeah. He said, I want you to know that you can trust our sister in Christ. This our sister in Christ, for me, you can trust her. And then he went for that. She's a servant. She's a special servant of the church in Caesarea. Everybody in the church are good. The people in Caesarea are loved by God. They are people loved by God. But in the midst of all the people in the church in Caesarea, please, there is someone I have something to say about. Her name is Phoebe. Please. She is a special servant of the church. How on earth will you call someone the servant of the church? It must have been that this sister had given it all to Christ. She got to a point where she said, there is nothing about me but Christ. Today you have people, if they are not married, they are frowning. If things are not going their own way, they withdraw, have an attitude. I told the sister, I said, if my son, for any reason, seek your hand in marriage, I will release fire. No, I'm not joking. This is, I told you that you should allow me to be very real with you. I will release fire. There are people whose attitude will not allow grace to rest upon them. Can you lift up your right hand? In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare from this service today that heaven will approve of you. Amen. Favor will speak of you. Amen. Child of God, it doesn't matter what is going on in your life. Give me your attention. There is a level of greatness you cannot rise to until God approves of you. Are you with me? There is a level of blessing you can't, you can't rise to. You can't get there. Or till God approves of you. 
There's a level of dominion you can't get to until God approves of you. When God approves of you, men can say no. This is Apostle, the servant of God, saying, For me, there are many people in the church, but this sister, she's a special servant of the church in Caesarea. If you read the preceding verse, he said, Whatever she needs, give to her. Whatever she needs, give it to her. Kalabasha. Someone here, I see sickness running away from your body. Yeah. When I got married in the year 2000, four ministries were present. Four. Four ministries. They were present that the moderator, a very good of my, friend of mine, Pastor Mike, was introducing me as a member of another church. Praise the Lord. The evangelist had to uh, correct him and say, no, he's a member of this church. The church I gave my life to Christ came. My parents' church, where I was at the time when I don't have a house, I went back to my parents' house, I became a member of the church. You know, they came. They brought gift. And I left those churches by reason of relocation. They heard I was going to get married, they all came. Praise the Lord. Who are you in his church? Ask your neighbor that. Don't carry your face down. Raise it up and ask your neighbor. Do you, who are you in his church? This is a special service because someone is going to be delivered from error. Who are you in his church? I told someone if you are to marry in this church, for example, and they make an announcement, who will come? One of our dear pastor got married some years ago. Just the way I do announce here, because it's good news to be married is all the good news. I announced from this order, so, 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 so person is getting married. The whole church went wide. When I came on the wedding day, the whole church feed up. That is a servant of the church. When the marriage ceremony was gone, if I, because he was you know, you see a son to me. I booked a place where they would go and do their honeymoon. So I paid for the hotel, took care of everything. How many times, how many days they choose to stay? When I went to the hotel to see him, when he told me the gift he received, I was shocked. When you serve God in spirit and in truth, Jesus, the heart of men will be moved to favor you. Can you say amen? amen? If I didn't go further than this place today, she is a special servant of the church in Sicilia. All this corny, 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 it will take you anywhere. Oh, they just close, just grab your bag. Oh, yeah, they go. And when you come, you touch the seat. The chair is dusty. And you call the ushers, your boys, your girls. Come and clean it. And they say, okay, ma, clean it for you. As they are cleaning, say, clean this thing very well, my friend. And then they clean it, then you sit down. That's why you are not getting blessed. Because Jesus said, if you want to be great in this kingdom, be a servant. Be who? Now, let me explain to you what it means to be a servant. To be a servant is not to have a name. To be a servant is that you are someone who serves another. But in the context of the church, you are someone who serves God and serves his church. If you are sitting here, say amen. amen. When you see those standing in the traffic unit, they are directing you. They are not being paid. They are serving God with the gift God has given to them. I saw the choir ministry this morning, and they were singing the special number they were singing. And some of you can even sing it better than the choir. But you are tied to your seat. Why can't you join the music department? Eh? You see, the nature of my work. Oh, it may even be that you are too special. You can't join this kind of music department. They are not good enough. You are just too good that you are not useful. 
Just too good. You know, I, I heard someone say that, you know, he went to get a job from a place. They, they, they advertised for a particular. So he went there, took all his results there, everything. And the company looked at him and said, ah, we can't employ you. And they say, well, I say, you are too qualified. <laughs> there are people who are too good that they are not good to themselves and to the church. What good is good when your good is not useful? The drama unit is asking, why you sit on your seat? The Lord is saying to you, that is your place. Bear pride. Bear anger. Because you can't stay under authority. Because you are the firstborn in a royal family. So you are the next Enoge. You are the next Oba. So you can't stay. But when it comes to God, know that he rules over the affairs of men. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's the owner of your soul. He's the one that gave you the breath of life. So whether you are the firstborn, the next Enoge, you cannot be Enoge over God. Because he owns your life. Are you still here this morning? Amodion, special. <laughs> What a blessing. Phobia is not missing in eternity. Generation of born will remember Phobia. Why? Because of those little commitments. I can tell you Phobia may have been criticized. Phobia may have been attacked. Because people like this, who are special to his church, they are the target of churchgoers. Mm, maybe by doing this one, maybe by doing this one, she may have been attacked. I'm not an extremist. I serve God the way I want to serve God. That's why their name didn't appear. There are people in church you cannot correct. You correct it the way from. They can't be referred to as special to the church. Lift up your arm. So someone today is saying, oh God, I need you to help me. I, I really want to. It's you I'm praying this prayer for. May God grant you grace to do in Jesus' name. Yes. Are you still there? Are you still there? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Have you ever bothered? I'm a member of my church. How is the church running? What, how, in what way can I fit in? The brother you saw that works with me and many of our leaders across our various branches, this brother is an engineer. He's a businessman. No, he comes here every Sunday. He's not on the church payroll. I asked him to minister last Wednesday. And he called me to apologize. He came late. I said, no, that is okay. Because the nature of his job is so demanding. He's a bit to his business premises. He has a very large business interest. His business is so time consuming. Yet, he hardly faced any service. And when he's here, because he has yielded himself to God and he's praying for you, you are saying amen. Meanwhile, you have been in this church before the church even started. We can't lay hand on you and say, this is one thing we can do with you. Aya, Jesus, I feel like pulling your cloth off. We can't lay hand on you and say, hey, go and uh, do this. No. No one brought him to this church. He said God spoke to him and he came. And since he came, he has been on ground. He was the head of the Austria department for many years. I asked him to live there, work with me, since most of our ministers went to our branches. Ask your neighbor, confidently, I'm the one asking you to ask your neighbor, what can the church do with you? Oh, if you don't ask, I will come bring you out. Say, what can the church do with you? No, no, ask them very well. Later, I say, what can the church do with you? Can the church have you sink? Can the church have you give? Can the church have you sweep? Can the church have you clean? Can the church have you preach? Can the church have you bring source? Can the church have you? What can the church do with you? A salt is useless until it is salty. A light is useless until it drives away darkness. Is that true? So when Jesus said you are the salt of the earth, it means you are to add value. When he said you are the light of the earth, wherever you are, darkness will go. Amen. Amen. Oh, bless people of God. Say, Amen. Amen. This is a church, a family affair. It's a church family affair. What can the church do with you? Timothy, 
the church spoke well of her. Phoebe, the apostle said, please, this sister is a special servant. Not the special city on the altar. Amen. Amen. Someone stretch your hand toward this altar. From today, heaven will approve of you. Amen. Now, very quickly, what is the role of the church? What did the church do? The church is a place where believers, that is those who are members, are discipled and spiritually nurtured as an important factor that determines the well-being of other areas of our lives. So what exactly do the church do? The church don't exist so that when you want to marry, we'll follow you to, for your, uh, to your marriage ceremony. The church don't exist so that when you, uh, maybe you, you lose your age parents, the church can follow you for burial. That is not the primary responsibility of the church. The church is not a cooperative society. The church is not your village meeting. The church is a place where you as a member, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you are discipled to be spiritually matured, spiritually strong. Do you know how heaven feels when maybe you put to birth and the church didn't visit you on time, which is not a thing we should justify, and you stop the church? You could possibly do that because you do not know the role of the church. Amen? Come on, I said Amen. Let me put it this way. If you are sitting here, say amen. amen. How many of you will say, where you work and you earn salary? Maybe you are a banker. You earn salary there. That's where you work. And then you had the baby. And your branch manager didn't come. You now resign. Would that happen? Would that happen? I said, please, I tender my resignation letter. And they ask you, why did you tender your resignation letter? He said, because when I had my baby... After one week, my branch manager didn't come. I resign. You know why you will not resign? Because that's where you get your salary from. You know if you resign, you will suffer. So your workplace, what do your workplace give you? Economic advantages. Economic what? They pay you salary at the end of it because you work. What do the church give to you? The church gives you spiritual advantages. Every other thing that the church will do for you is what? Is secondary. Oh, I want to marry. Do you know I married the minister of perfection? They did give me one cover. Now, we said you make you marry. <laughs> did we beg you to marry for us? Eh? He said, you're not going to go to that. I said, no, 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 no. I can't go to a church where, imagine I marry. See how much I spend. One naira they did give to me. I'm sorry to tell you. One naira will not owe you. Are you with me? So if you are a member of a church and you are building your budget, five million naira is what I need for this project or for this marriage. No, how, no, how, one million will come from church. Me, I'm telling you now, amen. If you give us that four million, we'll go take it from you. Because the church is never having enough money. Because, am I communicating? Yes, we have one of our leaders eventually backed out from the leadership circle. And I tried to talk to him. And you know, people can be very deceptive. Human being, the deepest place in this world is the heart of men. They can be smiling with you, but there's something in their mind. So I called him and said, I don't see you in a leadership circle. I said, no, no, no problem. I'll be very busy. Then he confided to the person he can talk to. I said, I will never join the leader circle anymore because when I married, the church didn't do anything for me. And I said, wow. So that is it? Wow. Come on, shout this. Say, the church exists for my spiritual well-being. Every other thing is secondary. Now, let me quickly put in this. If you are sitting here, say amen. amen. Can the church help out when someone is in need? Yes. Say yes. yes. Can the church be of help to people when they are in crisis? Yes. During COVID, we didn't put it on camera so you would know. During COVID, we gave about 50 families some bailout or palliatives, if you will, every month. Every month. We were giving them money and food items every month.
because we can't afford to have our people hungry when we can do something. And you know how those resources were coming? People were coming. A brother here, I don't know whether he's here, and I will call his name because I wouldn't want to embarrass him. I was at home one day when he called me during COVID. He said, I dropped 10 bags of rice in church. Please, Pastor, I know people are in need. Please just share it. Another person called and said, I'm giving 300,000 naira. Please, Pastor, share it 10,000. That's how we shared it to families. So the church can be of help to you. But may I pause to ask this question? What is your record in the church? If Obi was in a crisis with the church helper, talk, with the church helper, ah, why not? Phobi? Ah, no. Even if the church will not help her, God will help her. I ask a brother, church, church, how much have you contributed to the church? You were looking at me. How much have you ever given to the church? And I said, for 10 years, calculate your offering. Let me know the amount. Because you can. And he said, Pastor, I said, you can. Because your offering is never more than 300. Naira. Am I lying? So 303 years or, 20, or 10 years. Let me know. Because there are those who are in church. Their offering is like only that. You know the change. 200 naira, major offering. 50 naira, Thanksgiving offering. So for in a month, four Sundays, that is 1,000. For one year, 1,000 times 12 is finished. Yet, there are people like that who will attack the church. I don't know what they are doing. I don't know what they are doing. Lift up your two hands. May you become a person that God and his church we count on. Say that amen like you really need it. Amen. That doesn't mean that God needs the hem of flesh. But God can say, go to the church in Macedonia. Go to that church in Caesarea. I have many people in that church. But Phobie is there. Priscilla and Aquila is there. Mark is there. Epanotos is there. Why were these people singled out? Does it mean that God hate the other people? No, this one stood out. In the academic circle, you have first class, two one, two two, third class, and pass. The young went to the same school. So in the church, you have first class, you have two one, you have two two, you have third class, and then you have pass. Then you have advice to withdraw. Wow, pastor, you are going too far. Yeah, there are people when they become a spoiler and they refuse to change, we give you advice to look for a church across the road. Are you still here? Come, I can't feel you. Are you still here? In the church, you have gold, you have silver, you have bronze, you have clay in every church. You have wood, thank you. Which is clay or whatever. Lift up your two words. Say, I own this church. Oh, say it very well. In case, even if you don't like it, just say it now. You can change it later. Say, I own this church. My responsibility for the promotion and the advancement of God's kingdom. So why do the church exist? What is the role of the church? The church exists so that you can be spiritually discipled. Why is spiritual discipleship important? Because it's a, an important factor that determines the well-being of other areas of your life. If you are going to succeed in life, you need God. If you are going to succeed in business, you need his wisdom. If you are going to succeed in marriage, you need God in every aspect. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. That is why people who are members of a church, when they have breakthroughs, they don't ascribe it to their qualifications. They ascribe it to who? To God. That's why they'll come and say, uh, to God be all the glory believers, join me to thank God because I'll be given an appointment. Because they recognize that beyond their studies, beyond their connections, beyond their qualifications, beyond who they spoke to, the real help is who? But those who don't recognize that, whatever they, they God does for them, they will keep it to themselves. If I tell the church, now the church will not know. And some will even tell you, I'm not a boastful person. When you testify, you are not boasting. 
When you testify, you are boasting in who? In the Lord. You are saying, come and hear what the Lord has done. And the one who came back, Jesus gave him more. So as long as you will not testify to that which God has done for you in his church, listen to me, don't expect more. Because there could be more. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Boy. If you do well spiritually, other areas of your life will do well. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Third John 1, 2 to 3. Please, I told you, we're going to be on this for some time. Third John 3, Third John uh, 1, rather, 2 to 3. I, I don't know, but I, I think something's going to happen before next Sunday. Lift up your right hand. The blessings of this church will rest upon your family. Amen. The blessings of this church family will rest upon you and your family. Yeah. Third John 1, 2 to 3 says, My dear friend, what did they say? I know that you are doing well spiritually. If you are a committed member to, of his church, a committed member to his church, a committed member to the things the church does, there's no way you will not do well spiritually. So he said, I know you are doing I can see it. And he said, so I what? I pray that everything else is going well with you and that you are enjoying good health. As long as the church is taking care of you spiritually, teach you, preach to you, pray for you, guide you, correct you, rebuke you, build you up, and then you are doing spiritually or doing well spiritually, he said, I can also attest to the fact that other areas of your life will do well. Your business will do well. Your children will do well. Your career will do well. Your household will do well. Your health will do well. Because when you do well spiritually, it will affect other aspects of your life. Can you say amen? amen. Now hear what this passage said further. Verse number three. He says, some believers came and told me about the truth in your life. They told me that you continue to follow the way of what? Of truth. This made me very happy. You know, in this church, we have put it as a policy now. No midweek service, no walking. The reason is because if your spiritual life is bad, it will affect other areas of your life. So as a church family, we have desired that you should... This is not so that you can work for the church or so that the church can be filled. No. Right now, some ministry, online, there are members. In our branch, we have overflow there. So it's not about whether you come to church or not. It's about your spiritual well-being. When you do well spiritually, other areas of your life you do well. If you believe it, say amen. amen. But let me pause to quickly say this. How many of you love to do well spiritually? Amen. Okay, okay. Let me ask this question. And I know we all are sincere people. How many of you know that you really need spiritual help? Amen. How many of you... Okay. Maybe I didn't put it right. How many of you know that your spiritual life could be better than the way it is now? Yes. Thank God for that. So what is the role of the church? The church is to disciple you, nurture you spiritually, so that you become spiritually healthy, that will also affect other areas of your life. Amen. Amen. Note, as a believer, your spiritual well-being is a key factor that determines the well-being of other areas of your life. Never you forget that. Never you forget that. When you do well spiritually, it will determine how other aspects of your life we also do well. Lift up your right hand. I, I, I am compelling my spirit to pray for someone today. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you receive fresh hunger to seek God. Amen. Receive fresh hunger to seek God. Re receive fresh hunger to serve him. Amen. When I pursue my spiritual well-being, I am not doing the church any good. I am doing myself good. I know you are doing well spiritually. This morning I had a meeting with our, our, our esteemed workers. Uh, we call it workers class. And I told them, if your spiritual life is not okay, you are under a threat. Because we live in a world where Ephesians, Apostle Paul said to the church in Ephesus, we wrestle not against flesh and what? And blood. But they get principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness in high places. Some of us are too relaxed, just too relaxed. And the reason why you are realized because, you know, when there's anything I know who to run to, I know the man of God to run to, I know the number to call. Child of God, sometimes you may do all of that, it may not work for you. Because God desire to have you have a healthy spiritual life that will enable you to have a strong relationship with him. You'll be able to hear him. You'll be able to handle spiritual challenges. Can you say amen? amen. Let's quickly now this morning look at how a church emerges. 
the emergence of a church. How do church emerge? In our environment now, what today, we can't really say that this is how most of them emerge because there are churches that emerged because uh, economic reasons, we need to make money. It can emerge that way. But let's look at the, the ideal way churches come into existence. When you say this is a church, how do churches exist? Is it because, you know, someone just feed the anointing and then he said the next thing is I have to start my church so that I can be general of us here so that all the titan and the Africa enter my pocket. Are there any churches like that? I don't know. Maybe. But let's look as a church family how a church emerges or how churches emerge. The church as a body of Christ is graciously entrusted as a vision to a person who pioneers a denomination that encapsulates the mission of the church. All those long definitions, let me put it, you know, in the simplest form. A church comes into existence when God gives a vision to a man. That vision translates into a mission you now call a church. Amen. Come on, I said amen. amen. Yesterday we were having a conversation, myself and my daughter and my family were talking. I said, Ministry of Perfection, there's one thing that people don't like about us. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're still here, say amen. amen. For example, I don't know who I possibly will use for this illustration, but uh, let me just leave you out of it because some of you don't like the front seat because you're afraid I may use you. So let me allow you be. For example, as a pastor, if someone sees me in a beer parlor as a member of this church, they will stop and come to me as a pastor. If someone sees me as a pastor in a beer parlor, in a compromising way, they will stop and come to me and say, Pastor, how far? Now you get this beer parlor, I'll be whatever. They will make inquiries. Because this is a church that has one, that has a vision. The man of God said, when God appeared to him almost 40 years ago, he said, go and teach my people that they are spirit. Go and perfect my people. In other words, go and prepare my people to come to a point where Christ is fully seen in them. Then he said, God told him, go and prepare my people for rapture because I'm coming back again. So there are three goals. One, go, teach my people that they are spirit. Go, perfect my people. Then go, prepare my people for rapture. Now, if you look at these three things, there is no compromise in them. I can't feel you anymore. So what is the, therefore the mission of this ministry? The mission of this ministry is to prepare you as a bride for the groom. Celebrate that. Now let me quickly chip in this. Please, please stay with me. Please, I beg you stay with me. Please. What I'm about to say next may surprise some of you. Whether you accept it or not, the system of the world is failing. Do you agree? Oh boy, no, 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 no. Do you agree, man? Do you agree, sir? That the system of the world is failing. Many years ago, I'm going to my 60 years now. We used to hear that people are being kidnapped and they will be asking, kidnapped. <laughs> it's only in movies we watch them. Then I'll tell you why. It started in uh, Iraq or somewhere. Suicide bombers. We will hear of them. It's like, what are they saying? As we speak now. Kidnapping has become a profession. Of course, you heard the testimony of one of us who was kidnapped because he works for a big establishment that they say should bring 100 million, but God delivered him. Kidnapping is on rampage. Social bombers are let loose. And Jesus said, one of the signs you will see when the time is near are some of these things. Men will be lovers of themselves. I don't know how many of you saw it. Someone killed the mother. Slept with the mother. And locked the door. His own mother. I can imagine if the name is Ezekiel. The mother would say, Ezekiel, I'm your mother. Which mother? The money I will make is more than you. Cut the mother's neck. Or strangle the mother, rather. They slept with the mother. The mother's dead body. Because they told him. That if he does that, he go blow. What do you call that? 
Listen to me. Oh, come on. Am I digressing? I'm not too sure. Let me see. All the castles you are building now, all the castles you are building, you think you are going to live here forever. One day. One day be one day. I used to like this word. It says, last, last. All of us go face Jehovah. And you know what? It's not going to be a long time to come. Someday, when COVID came, COVID taught me a lesson. COVID told, taught me that this world can fail. Because we saw that everything fade. Can I tell you what the Lord told me? COVID is a pre-warning sign. Another one is coming. I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you. He said, Perenos time shall come. Do you know what is happening now? A time will come. Listen. Oh, come on. A time will come. There will be no money in circulation. There will be no one nara in circulation. Everything will be done online. What is that preparing us towards? It's preparing us towards a time where you will need to identify with the mark of the beast for you to survive. I went to EFCC office in Exothi. Let them hear me. I'm going to say it. I needed, you know, something they call small, small certificate for a business who registered. I got to the gate with my nose mask at the peak of the COVID. And I introduced myself. And I told them one of the staff members needed to see me. Gave me an appointment. The staff member came out from their office, stood at the gate. They said, where is my COVID certificate? And I said, I'm not taking COVID vaccine. He said, no COVID vaccine, no entry. I thought they were joking. I said, do you mean that? He said, you can't come in. As I turned my back to leave, the Lord said, this is how it will be at a time. If you appear, they say, where is the mark? You don't have the mark. Say, there's no food for you. There's nothing for you. It's only those who are of Christ that will survive it. Don't say you didn't hear, including me. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is coming back again. Oh, I know you don't want to hear that because you are afraid of your marriage ceremony that is coming up in January. And you want to be very sure that the marriage will hold before Jesus will come again. I can't guarantee that. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you still here? How can you be threatening this morning that Jesus is coming back again? I just started laying the foundation of my house. I'm not going to finish him. I don't know. The Bible says, when it shall come, two individuals will be grinding. One will be taken away, one will be left. Then listen to this again. Please, 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 please. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to tell you very something. But he said, the bride and the groom will be before the altar. Why the groom hold the hand of the bride to pull the marriage ring? The marriage will fall on the ground. All the money he has given to event planners is gone. The wife wedding, the bride wedding guy is on the floor. He will pick the wedding ground, take home as an evidence. I said, I'll be one married before the rapture. Don't take my wife. Come on. Those are the signs. So why should we take the coming of Jesus Christ, the second coming of Jesus Christ very seriously? Because the system of the world is failing. Tell your neighbor that. Say it one more time very loud. Are we not saying that when you go to market today, the next day you go, the prices are not the same? What are that? Inflation. So every church is a vision entrusted to a person. There is something like God gave us the vision. God don't give us vision. God gives a person a vision. Then when you become part of the organization, you now own the vision. You become a partaker or a partner with the vision. Lift up your two hands. May heaven reward you for being a part of this vision. So when you give to that vision, you actually not give it to church. You are giving to the one who gave the vision. Has it been abused? Many times. But Jesus is still Lord. Every denomination denotes its core values in the message, the members you see in that church, and the mission. So when you see, let me put it this way. Please, I don't mean to offend anybody. But are you aware there are some members you see, you just know that they are from this particular church? Have you ever seen before? Have you ever seen any member like that? You don't need to be told, you now ask, are you a member of so-so church? They say yes. You see on that member, I say, are you a member of this church? I say yes. There are some members, you know, please stand, sir. There are some members where they are greeting each other. Can you speak in tongues? Okay, give me your hand. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. 
I know you can't touch me the way I'm touching you. <laughs> so you're scared, you know. But this, give me your hand. You just know that member of so-so so church. That is your identity. Is that not true? There are some other churches who say, I cannot be poor. You know where they are coming from. Are you still there? Are you still there? Come on, are you still there? They assure all the members of a particular church because that is the assignment. Their, their gown is covered their head, their legs rather. Very long. Their ears are never seen. You also know this where they belong. Then you show another mission that has been given as an assignment to that denomination through that one man when they are praying. Huh. <laughs> now, you like them, you hate them, they are doing what God sent them. Are you with me? Bishop sent me to go to a church and represent him. I went graciously, I went joyfully to go and represent him. I was very ecstatic. When I got there, sit down, sir, thank you. The music was playing so, the choir was singing powerfully. So I, I was so in love with the music, the atmosphere. So I started dancing. But when I started dancing, it's like a voice said, look around. Nobody is dancing. As powerful as the music is that they were just doing. So when you are in Rome, you act like you are a Roman. So I also started doing like this. But I could not. Because that is not our culture. In my ministry, we dance. We praise. We, then I shut down when the message, uh, the, the choir were done. And it was the message time. Powerful message. Powerful word. Powerful entrance. Powerful prophecy. Everybody sat down. And the amen is like this. Amen. Amen. At one time I said, no. This live as a Roman, I don't like it. I started increasing my amen. Then I found out that some persons who also came like I am, they are not a member of that church, they also started increasing their amen. So each time we say a loud amen, they will look at us. Where are you from? <laughs> Every church do have its mandate. Its mandate. So when you go to one church and they are doing like this, you now come here. And you now expect us to do like this. It's wickedness. Because this is not our identity. If you go to Zenith Bank, Zenith Bank has its culture. You go to First Bank, First Bank has what? Its culture. Assess Bank has its culture. When you, they, when you do use POS and they, they didn't, they, they declined and they didn't, the money didn't reflect. They said they, they don't use what? Amen. Okay, let me not enter trouble. <laughs> but I know what I'm saying. Because by tomorrow I'm going there. Because I've done a lot of transactions. It's a transaction decline. They never reverse my money. More than one year. So I'm going there. In case you see me on television, watch out for me tomorrow. I'm ready to go up <laughs> because you can't cheat me like that. Are you seeing here? So every bank has its own culture. Every church has its own culture. Can I ask you this question? Do you have the culture of this church? The culture of this church, we preach the word. We pray. We come on. That is our culture. If you're a member of the church, you don't have your Bible in your heart. You are not a member. Because this one church you call is like a school. Is that true? Yes, we teach you the word. We ask you to pray. We can't give you a prayer point without the Bible. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Okay. Quickly. In every church you have ministers. So what are the responsibilities of the ministers in the church? This way I will stop today. Because I have to let you go. If I give everything to you one day, you may not remember a lot of things. It would have overspent some time anyway, but let's see this. Lift up your right hand. The angels and the grace of God upon this church will appear to you. Amen. I said it will appear to you. Amen. It will work for you. Amen. Do you know one thing I can vouch and tell you? I'm not telling you this because I'm your pastor. I'm telling you because I've experienced it. In this church, there is a grace for deliverance so strong. That's why most of you come, I had accident. Gas exploded. This one happened. This one happened. This one happened. Yet God, lift up your hand. May the deliverance angels assigned to deliver people from destruction and danger in this ministry, may they be at work in your life and your family. Yeah. 2000 and, should be 2009. 
I left home one day. I've shared this testimony over and over again. I'll keep sharing. I will not be tired of it. I left home. Why is the Lord asking me to pray this? Someone lift up your right hand. What cannot destroy the vision bearer of this ministry will not be able to destroy you. Amen. Angels said to guide this ministry and guide the members. May they speak for you on every side. Cancer will not grow in your body. Any head condition you are having right now that is beyond what mercy can do, I reverse it in Jesus' name. Your children will not be sent to others to care for them. Your wife will not be married by another. Your enemies will not rejoice over your grave. Wow, wow, wow. Why am I praying this morning? You will not be capacitated by accident. Any tag on your life that causes evil to work against you and follow you, that tag is removed now in Jesus' I don't know why God is asking me to pray this prayer for someone. In your family line, angels have been assigned. They will do your battle. They will take care of your children. Amen. Do you know that from today? Kalisha la gada Boundary lines will fall before you in pleasure places. Do you know there are special angels assigned now to start working for you? Amen. To start protecting you? Amen. To start blessing you? Amen. To start opening doors for you? Makarabashagadoshia. Any door shut against you? Not to move to the next door. Do you know that that door is open now? Amen. Father, we thank you. Amen. Celebrate the word of God for you today. Take your seat. So I, I left home that evening, sir, for a vigil. As I was about to leave, my wife said to me, why don't you just stay at home and not go for the vigil today? I insisted that I was going to go for the vigil, so I went. To cut the long story short, we, run, we ran into the midst of robbers where they shot at us so terribly that I thought I was gone. They shot at us from every angle. We were able to escape from the scene. When we got to the place we were going for the vigil, my head was hot. My, uh, my assistant who went with me back then who is now a pastor, a G.O. of his own church in Warren, remove his shirt. You know what we saw? The bullet pierced holes in the shirt. You could see the holes, but not a scratch. Now, why did I have to bring that in? Because there are special angels that God has assigned to work with every church, every ministry. Am I communicating? So, when you are a member of a church, you see, don't try to compare this church to that church. Because when you do that, you are unwise. Amen? amen. I said, amen. amen? Lift up your right hand. You and I will sing a new song, a victory song, into 2023. Amen. My mother, my biological mother traveled to my hometown. I didn't know she was on a journey back. I was at home and I, I just found out that I was not happy. It's like something happened and I was not in a good mood. And I said, Lord, what is this? I can't, I can't relate that with anything that may have happened recently. And the Lord said, go into your room and pray now. So I went inside the room, locked the door, and I just prayed. After I was done, the body was lifted out. I came out. The evening of that day, my mom gave me a call and said, please, please join me, thank God. We were attacked by robbers. The person who sat with me, they go pierce his body and his blood splashed on my body. And I said, wow. So that was why there was a burden in my heart. And the Lord said, go and pray. What is it that you think God cannot do? Someone, let me speak this over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Very soon, someone is coming to confess to you. They are letting go your children. Amen. 
Yeah. You're letting go your family. Yeah. I thought your image should be stronger than that. Yeah. They are letting go your blessings. Yeah. Anyone holding back whatever belongs to you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ, they are releasing it. Yeah. God sent Moses to Egypt, say, go and tell my people. Go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Can I stand on this altar today and pronounce this over you? In the name of Jesus Christ, I release your blessings. Amen. Whatever is holding back your marriage today, I release your marriage to happen. Amen. The responsibilities of the church leadership, what are they? Before we do so, let's read this. In every church, there are pastors, there are ministers, evangelists, pastors, whatever, you know, position they occupy. So what are their responsibilities? Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we read together? And he has appointed some with grace to be apostles and some grace to be prophets and some grace to be evangelists and some with grace to be pastors and some with grace to be teachers. 12. And their calling is to nurture. I wish these people are working with me. Can you say it? And their great and their calling is to what? Is to give money. Is to follow to labor word. What are they do? What are they to do? And their calling is to nurture and prepare who? All the holy believers to what? To do their own works. No, read this part. If you don't read any other part, please read this with me. What do they say? And they call you pastors, evangelists, apostles, uh, prophets, and what have you. What are their role? Their calling is to nurture. And prepare how many? How many holy believers are here? These holy believers are to what? To do their own works of ministry. Ask your neighbor, are you doing your own work? No, no, you, you said it like it's none of my business. Can you tell your neighbor, are you really doing your own work? So, be it. Being a church member is not to come and sit down, say amen, draw some few change on the altar, and just go home. No. The church prepares you, nurture you, groom you, disciple you, then you step into your place. Now, look at the word works of ministry. Now, in every church, there are those who are preaching. That's what I do. There are those who are intercessors. Everybody can pray. But there are people called into that office day and night. Let me say this to you. I operate in that office as well. Do you know that I can sit in the congregation when I'm not the one ministering and I'm not praying? When someone stands on this altar ministry, I'm writing, I'm praying. Don't forget, there are some prayers that you don't pray out. Kalabasha. As me say, come on, it's ministry. Lord, let your word come with power. Let every resistance, I'm praying that. I'm praying that, Lord, let your work come with power. Let your work bless every life. Yes, Lord. Because it is part of my assignment. And that's what I did for many years with my pastor. He entrusted me with the ministry or the assignment to lead a prayer band. My wife then was part of the prayer band. And many other ministers who are now pastors now, they are still in this ministry. We will hold a prayer session for 30 days. Fasting, praying for the church. We function in that place. There are those, their work is not to do any of that. They pray, they can preach, but theirs is that they spot what others cannot see. Why is this light not working? This light should be working. Why is it not working? I've been told recently that those of you at the back when we say, read scriptures. I, I can know, no matter how powerful your eyes may be. I'm not sure you'll be able to see from there to this place. Not everybody can see it. So there are people who will come to church and say, ah, the slide is foul. How many screen can we? One, two, three, four, five. About six slides. Nobody will tell you. You are like the Barnabas of the church. You are like the Arimathea of the church. That is your assignment. And upon that, God will bless you. Amen. I said, amen. amen. A brother came to me not too long ago and said to me, Pastor, I said, yeah. He said, there's something God laid in my heart and I'm going to do it. And in that, you don't need to say, knee down. Let me pray for you. I said, may the Lord grant you grace to get it done. Child of God, God who sees what you do in the secret, how will he reward you? <laughs> now, please, I'm going to stop here today. But listen to this. Most times, the testimonies we like to hear is that I gave 
100,000. And since I gave 100,000, I'm now a millionaire. I say, hey, somebody will go and give. And when you have not given, and after six years, you are not a millionaire, you say, they don't scam me. <laughs> now listen to this. Listen to this. Does it mean that if you give, God will not bless you? Yes, God will do bless you. God will bless you. But let me quickly say this to you. But how many times when we delivered from destruction that would have permanently terminated our lives or incapacitate us? But because we obey God, he came and delivered us. Now, let me ask you this question. If you have had a breakthrough of one billion naira and died the next day, what would be the value of one billion? So, not every time you give that God will give you money. Some, oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How can you be in the kitchen and gas exploded and no scratch? Can money do that? I'm talking to God-loving people. God, people loved by God. Are they here? A trailer. Okay. I can't remember. My wife was doing her master's at the time. She asked me to follow her to Agbo. Thank you. Someone clap hand for the goodness of God upon your life. The things he does in your life that eyes cannot see. Celebrate him! I took my wife to Agbo during her master's. Myself and my two little children, they were still in primary school. We went together. We lost in a hotel in Agbo. Then the next day, my wife went to meet her cosmate, one Mr. O'Mere. So my, myself and my children said, let's go and catch phone. So I took them to Mr. Briggs. Is it Mr. Biggs or Mr. or Mr. Briggs? Whatever. So we went to Mr. Biggs. Is it Mr. Briggs or Biggs? Biggs. We went to Mr. Biggs. So we sat down, my children, they're very young. And now they are grown up. I was there, we're eating and we're drinking, we're just enjoying, waiting for their mom to finish. Suddenly we heard a shout. Hey! People were screaming. So I came and left my children inside. I came out. And I saw people heard their head. And so people were jumping like this. So I was looking at her. I went close to someone. I said, What happened? He said, You didn't see what happened? He said, A trailer laden with fuel lost control and was heading towards Mr. Briggs. Where me my two children were eating meat pie. Amen. The love of meat pie. Are you still with me? He said they don't know how the tailor veered up. He said, now the tailor and I entered that place. So. And I paused and I said, where if, where if one enter? <laughs> I was speechless. So now saw so the trailer for enter in the slope in Agbo, if you are used to Agbo. The Mr. Bridge was there by the, by the right where you are going. So that is how the trailer would have come, run into the place, it will explode. And you know, each time I'm to do certain things, I don't tell my wife because she will say, don't go. So I didn't tell her that we're going to eat meat pie and uh, drink this thing in Mr. B. So if the trailer has rammed into Mr. B and it exploded, God forbid, we would have been born to arches, the car completely burned, and then she will start calling and they will say the line is unreachable. Jump to your feet and say, God, thank you. What is it that this God has not done for me? So when I stand here and I preach and I dance and I admonish you and yet I have no car and I'm depressed, I'm not normal. Because God has done for me what money cannot do. Take your seat. I will soon be done with this. When I came out, I just hurried my children. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. Because we don't know whether another attacker is coming. That's how we left the place. When I told my wife, I said, hey, I know you and your children. And I said, so both fire are born us. That's all you for talk. But God sent the special angels. I said, not now. You came too late, devil. You can't destroy this family. Today, it would have been on news that one pastor, very tall pastor, can shout when he's preaching. Are you still here? He and his two children, born to uh, lift up your two hands. Your record will not be a record of tragedy. Say that in heaven. I say your record will not be the record of tragedy. Yeah. 
What is it that this God cannot do? What are the responsibilities of pastors? He said they are to nurture you and then prepare you to do your own works of the ministry. Your own work, sir. Your own work, man. Your own work, sister. Since we have been preparing you, are you doing your own work? But let me quickly say this. It's never too late. The time for you to say, in this church family, I have decided in my heart, I'm going to be committed to Christ. I'm going to be committed to his church. God bless you. Pastor, are you done for today? Yes. 